Willie does exactly the things any tasteful and melodic picker should do when they take a lead. He stays chill, not trying to impress anybody with how many notes he can fit into the space. He starts with the vocal melody and then adorns it with chromatics, double stops, arpeggios, and even some jazzy chords. We're gonna look at three solos today and reflect on what we may need to study to sound kinda like Willie. Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, how to schedule lessons with me, live streams and more on Patreon, and my courses. It's all on my website. Let's start with Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. I mentioned that in last week's video about Carter style playing. So we did the rhythm last week. The song's in E. You know, it's, it's you know, one, four, five, and E, you know, three chords in the truth, but let's look at what he drops in there with. E major. So you can see what I'm doing there. That's the vocal melody. So to find that, let's see how you would have to know E major over there and maybe over here as well. So that melody, though, is kind of split between those. And Willie will bend on a nylon string. Cool. That's our first phrase. And then the next little adorn, adornation, <laughs> adornment we get. Yeah, that is harmonizing the scale in thirds. That's the G sharp. So pretty, pretty thing to do. Kind of like sixes, but a little bit different. You can see that. He's listening, listening for that vocal melody. That's really neat. So there's an E chord. He's getting that B tone, that A, and then getting that third. And here comes another Willie-ism. That. If this is an E chord here, then yeah, you're going to do chromatically pull, pull back. There it is, that's Willie right there. Neat. And then, yeah, kind of walking back up in a little kind of arpeggio pattern. There's the E chord, though. I think I would stay there for that. And then here comes some double stops, because here's a B chord. Here's B major pentatonic. That's a Hendrix double stop. And then the melody, so that passage. And then here comes another Willyism, Willy Nation. Diminished. That's Willie right there. This chord structure, this is so Django Reinhardt, right? It starts to sound like minor swing. Anyway, I could analyze that a little bit, but first let's look at it. That's how he gets out of that. So that you could call a C diminished. But if I think about it for a second, those tones also show up in an F7 chord. And then this one, that also could kind of be thought of as an E7. So it's kind of a little bit like a walk down. And then a B flat six. Where's that B flat six? There it is. Like a, that's jazz. That's jazz, baby.
that is that one. So I think the two biggest takeaways from that, you got the thirds. No, it's three. You got this maneuver, that thing there, and the... All... Now, this only works, by the way, that would only work, you know, the bass is doing that, and, you know, it's part of the arrangement. I wouldn't necessarily, as a rule, just say you can always just throw diminished triads around. They are a special kind of thing. I've talked about it a couple years ago. I need to talk about it again in a more clear way. So there's that one already, a neat thing to work on. Great little just solo to keep around. Yeah, just beautiful little solo. Now, hands on the wheel. thing starting with that vocal melody this one's an a and you know it's a longer chord structure you know but it's still like a d and e there's an f sharp and an f in there as well so it's just a little bit of substitution going on in that one too okay so starting with the vocal melody sounds like silver bells vocal melody but that's the d chord right there also the D. Here's a Willieism. A chord, little kind of major pentatonic flourish. And then he found the E chord there. Let's look at that. So that second phrase. Wait. Again with the thirds. Oh, yeah, because on an E. That's kind of taking the A and turning it into an E7. <laughs> I can reference Credence every week, but yeah, that's that lick. Comes around again. Or flourish. That's pretty. A little triplet kind of thing there. So that second kind of come around. Triplet. Same thing though. There's a major. Kind of more major pentatonic, but that's adorning the melody. This is a cool lick right here from, we're on a D now, and then, store that one away. That's a really cool little turn. So that lick. You know, that's a Mixolydian lick on A. That's neat, and then from that, Then he's using sixes, so yeah, the sixes show up more in this one. So from that cool Mixolydian lick, slide back to get this A, and then here comes a sixth passage. Oh wait. So we got this little E here, because now we're on the E chord. And then here comes the A. I, I talked about that before, so yeah. 
sixes are a thing to study. I did a video on that. Gotta do it again. I'm always, you know, I end up remaking videos a lot to try and make them simpler and clearer and clearer. But yeah, a sixth is not a chord in this scenario. It's a distance between those two tones. One, two, three, four, five, six scale tones apart from each other. One, two, three, four, five, six notes away. Anyway, then hang on that for one and a half beats and then another willy flourish. There, yeah, we have this one. Because he's thinking about this A chord here. You could have done a full chromatic, but I'm actually gonna go mixolydian. Oh, that reminds me of Wayne's World. Twiddy doo. Big arpeggio, big A arpeggio. A chord, there's the third of it. This is the most beautiful part of this solo from that run that. Let's talk about that because now we're on an E chord. And now you don't have to hit that open, I just like to. This seems like, oh, that's a nothing, Eric, but it's a big deal. If we're on an E, you can always, you can always kind of do a little flat third to the second to the root. It's just a nice little, you know, rootsy thing to do. And then use opens, because we're gonna do more harmonizing the scale in sixths is. So yeah, that is, you know, the melody would have been harmonized at six tones below. So to be able to do that, you have to be able to see the A major scale on that string as well as that string and then keep them six tones apart to get that. And it's so pretty. So from that... so nice that's so like yeah well done well played sir well played and then though he is not you know he's playing to them changes he knows that an f sharp minor is coming because there's f sharp minor and so yeah that's playing off the f sharp minor and it's interesting he does it a second time because that ends up working on that f natural f sharp minor no, there's there's an F natural so that you know F and A that works out. He's he, he's he's very smart. He's a very smart man. And then we're kind of back the, back around at the top. You know, that's just kind of the same. But then there is at the very end another another little willy flourish. Again, you gotta know A major. But I argue he's putting that flat the uh, that G natural. I could do it either way. But it's like that's a little slower than that. So you know, either one is correct enough. When putting this lesson together, I kind of went through Willie's catalog quickly because it's an enormous, legendary catalog. And I was looking for the record where the nylon string guitar kind of appeared the most prominently. And it, it's on um, Redheaded Stranger. I highly recommend this record. So all these songs are on that record. Uh, the simplest one that we'll look at today is, is uh, Bandera. Also, though, sixes. Yeah, so sixes are folksy, that's for sure. They're country. Because, okay, we got a G chord. And it's kind of neat if you notice, yeah, those are just inside the chord. And yeah, I'm hybrid picking those. Walk 
it down chromatic. Just a C chord, E chord, A minor. And this is cool though. He wanted, you know, it would have been another C, actually a C7, but he was smart enough to know that he wanted the G in the bass, so it ends up having that note on the bottom. And then, I don't know why, but he, he knew like, oh, you know, it would be cool if I made it an, a C9 over G. Jazz. He knows enough jazz to do this. This is, yeah, this is why knowing a little bit of jazz is cool. So you don't need to become a bebop shredder, but like, yeah, this stuff is cool. Okay, so from the C, the E, A minor, that C9 over G, walk it down chromatic to an F, melody, there's F minor. to a C, and here comes the G, another chromatic walk down from the G, I love this, he does a little bend on that, here's this C, but the, again it's sixes, it's, that's just like a simple little loop, it's so pretty to practice, I, you know me, I always recommend having a repertoire of short things, short things from existing songs that are of the style of music that you wish you could play, uh, intros, solos, chord progressions, things like that, that you keep coming back to again and again and again. And yeah, all three of the things we looked at today are great, great little repertoire builders to just kind of keep around and keep revisiting to see how much like Willie we can sound. So to review... We, you know, I, I, well, you know me, I'm a big proponent of the cage system. So like realizing that there's a C, there's a C, there's a C, there's a C. Oh, on this guitar. Oh, can I get it? There's the next C. And that also in all those locations, there's our C major pentatonic. Because that also then will ultimately tell us, hey, there's our C major. You know, the cage system stores things. I'm going to talk more about it next week, that caged and triads are the same thing, by the way. Think of caged like a storage system for the triads, the scales, the arpeggios, everything, all the licks. Um, I know it's an internet buzzword, and I think it's totally healthy to be a little suspicious about internet buzzwords, but it really is when I look about you know, all the things I've transcribed and all the players I, I like. I'm like, that's the simplest way I know to look at everything. Um, other things to think about are, yep, those uh, harmonizing the scale in thirds, for example, like that E. It's such a great sound. And then, of course, harmonizing, harmonizing, har harmonizing a scale in sixes. Let's stay in E. I guess we're E blues. Yeah, let's look at that lick again. You know, being able to do stuff like that's a big deal to be able to throw those around. And, but the main thing, I think the first thing before all the licks is having the patience to sit around and trace out the vocal melody. I'm going to say that again having the patience to sit around and trace out the vocal melody. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's going to educate us very well about, you know, what maybe is a jumping off point for a nice, tasteful, melodic solo. Very often folks, you know, will come to me for lessons being like, I wish my solos were more melodic. I wish I was a more melodic player. My number one advice is always just trace out that melody. It doesn't have to be 100%. Just really, you know, it'll always work. You know, ask George Harrison. Like, it always works. It always sounds good. Is that all we got to talk about for today? That's all we got to talk about for today. If you enjoy my work, please like, subscribe, and share. That costs you nothing and helps people like me out immensely who work this gig. One more time around how my business works.
You can book lessons with me, live streams, charts, and backing tracks. That's on Patreon and my deep dive courses. It's all on my website. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza. (laughs) 